Welcome everyone to this uh, week's episode of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm your co-host Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And today our program is Autism and Yoga with our guest uh, Serena Azizo, who will be informing us about the program that she works with yoga and autism. But before we begin with, Will, what's with your shirt this time? Well, well, Keith, for this month, I'm wearing my Best Buddies shirt in, to, to promote Best Buddies. La last year, Best Buddies had their in-person Champion of the Year gala. This would be our first in-person event since the pandemic took over. It, it was a huge, it, it's this award ceremony Best Buddies puts on every year where we honor our, our, cha our, our, our champion, our, their champions every year. We nominate a different member to be a, to be our champions, and and it, we had an award and we had a so ceremony for them at the Intercontinental Hotel on Fifth and Howard in in the Mish downtown. Well, thank you very much, Will. Appreciate that, and uh, hope the event goes very very well. Before we begin, I'd like to let our viewers know that besides our uh, regular commentators Jennifer Brooks book correspondent and cultural correspondent Stacy Kennedy. Today we'll be joined um, by Ascend co-founder Camilla Vixler as part of the interviewing. So uh, that being said, Will, over to you for your questions for our guest. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Serena, tell us about your background and, and how you started this program. Sure, thanks for asking me, Will. So I started doing yoga on my own in high school. I never enjoyed doing competitive sports. I didn't like the nature of competition. I like the idea of yoga because it's a practice with yourself and it's something that you do collectively in a group. There's no one's a winner, no one's a loser. We're all in it together. And so it's something that I've, I've always, you know, for most of my life, you know, taken part in and, um, having a sibling, a brother on the autism spectrum, I'm very familiar with ASD, the triumphs, the challenges, everything that comes with it. And I've seen, you know, through my teaching my brother and doing yoga with my, uh, my brother, how beneficial it is for both self-esteem, for breath work, so many things. So I took the time over the pandemic to actually get certified in yoga for autism. Um, it's one of the greatest decisions I've ever made in my life. And now I get to teach so many interesting people, meet so many beautiful souls. And my goal in this work is to create a worldwide community and to make the notion of yoga for autism a household name because sadly not enough people know about it, but that's where I come in and that's my mission. Tell us about the relationships between autism and yoga. Sure. So like I had mentioned a little bit earlier, um, you know, through the people I teach and through doing yoga with my brother, I've noticed that it has such amazing impacts on helping with regulating anxiety, you know, through breathing, just even breathing alone, learning different types of breath work can change your mood within 10 minutes. It just, it changes the way you see the world. It changes the way you feel inside. Um, a lot of people on the autism uh, spectrum have sensory processing disorders. And, you know, with that comes, you know, having a lack of kinesthesia, um, not great balance. And by doing yoga, it really helps with that. Um, like certain poses like planking or downward facing dog, that really helps with making them aware of their action and their location, the timing of their movements. I've, I've seen that firsthand. Um, and like I mentioned before, the idea of being part of a community as someone who was raised, you know, with a sibling on the autism spectrum, I know, um, how cruel and how exclusive the world can be towards people on the spectrum or family members of people on the spectrum. And, you know, by being in a communal type of practice, it gives people on the spectrum a sense of self-confidence and, and a space where they can take risks, you know, without being embarrassed or feeling badly about themselves. So again, it's this idea of creating a community and giving them the skills to self-regulate and, you know, just breathe through what could be a challenging situation. 
Tell us about the groups you work with. Great question. So the groups I work with, I work with some group homes, you know, assisted living centers for people on the spectrum who are young adults. Um, some of those classes are focused just on breathing. Some are focused just on stretching. You know, you have to cater to what each person needs or, you know, what kind of mood they're in that day. If they're, you know, high energy, it's a good time to take it in and, you know, do some essential oils to help calm them down. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's about reading the room. Um, I would also say that I work with a lot of private clients, whether it's one-on-one -on -one in their homes or, you know, groups of friends, family members um, together as, you know, a collective unit. It's a fun way to bring the family together and bond. And I also teach um, day programs to both young adults and children on the spectrum. And, the, and these classes are both in person and on Zoom. Now I'd like to introduce, as previously mentioned, uh, Ascend co-founder Camilla Bix so for a few questions for our guest. Uh, we're so glad that you can be here today. I'm curious with your work, what are some of the greatest challenges you face in doing this kind of work? That's a great question, Camilla. Um, so I'd say one of the biggest challenges I've faced is the unpredictability of this demographic. Because you, you could walk into a class and someone could be having a, a meltdown. Someone could be having just a really tough day. And as much as I may want to connect and reach out, it, it, there's sometimes this barrier that just doesn't allow me to do that. So in cases like that, sometimes I don't even have the class or, you know, we just, I, I even open, if, if the person is verbal and would find it therapeutic to connect and speak, we have a class where we talk. I mean, I, I think that's part of yoga. Yoga lifestyle isn't just movement. It's not doing poses and, and stretching. It's taking on a way of living where you check in with yourself and you give yourself self-care and listen to that inner voice. So even if it means us speaking and, you know, just venting, that's yoga too. Wow. There's so much we can learn. What do you find um, the most gratifying part of your work, Serena? Uh, the most gratifying part? Well, two things. One is I have an even stronger bond with my sibling as a result of this work. Um, he and I both do this together. Um, and it's just, it's been such a special and fun journey. And also I, I love making a positive impact in this world. And I, and I like sharing with people that this, like I said earlier, that, that yoga for autism is even available. Like I, I, eight out of 10 people who I tell this to are like, wait, that, that exists? Of course it exists. Why shouldn't they have yoga? everyone should be doing yoga. Um, so I'd say the most gratifying thing is, is just, you know, the outreach and, and trying to, you know, spread this kind of hidden little secret to, you know, the whole world. That, that's, that's pretty much my life goal is, is to make this a household name and to put Yoga for Autism just on the map. So inspirational. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Camilla. Uh, now I, uh, our book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks, has a question for Serena. Do you think that if the schools were to implement this as part of its general curriculum for all students, that it could have any academic or social benefits? It's so funny that you asked me. I, I promise you, I was having this conversation the other day with someone. I attended a benefit for one of the day programs I teach, and I was telling one of the teachers how in every type of school, you know, right after you say the Pledge of Allegiance, you should have five minutes of meditation just to get your head in the right space to be with yourself and just start the day on, on the best note that you can. So my answer is yes. I think even, I mean, yoga would be ideal, but even just like a five minute meditation, just getting in touch with yourself and starting your day on the right note would be extremely beneficial for mental health, for focus, just getting yourself in that right space. So my answer is yes. I, I think it, totally should be part of um, schools for everybody. Yeah. So how do we get schools to actually do this? That is a great question. Um, I, I don't know where to begin, but, you know, I think one of the lessons I've learned on my journey is we can't do this alone. So I think we need people like us to, to gather and collaborate and start knocking on people's doors and making this happen because it needs to happen. Uh, now I'd like to ask you a few questions, Serena, myself. Uh, first of all, uh, what type of yoga do you practice and teach? So the type of yoga I practice and teach is Hatha yoga. 
Mm -hmm. So what is that? That is often, it, it, it's put in the same category as vinyasa, but vinyasa is faster paced and vinyasa is aligning the breath with the movement. Hatha is more of an emphasis on the breathing and then slowly making your way into the pose and the movement and holding it for a little longer. So it's, it's more focused on breath work. The movement takes a lower stance, so to speak. Um, and I think for this population, it's a great, great approach. Um, I even do a little bit of reflexology um, for the caregivers and parents when I teach those classes, because I think that's just so key. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Hatha with a little bit of reflexology. Excellent. Um, and what level, how can I put this, what type of people on the spectrum do you deal with? When I gather that you work with residential homes, I gather some of the people are requiring high levels of support. Is that mm -hmm. typically who your uh, clients are? Or could you tell us more about that? Sure, it's a great question. Um, so again, like the like the word ASD uh, insinuates, it is a spectrum. So yeah. I have a wide variety of, of students. So some of my students in, in the group home, some are very, very athletic. One of them is very into sports. I sometimes teach him one-on-one -on -one privates because he is at a much, um, he wants a faster class than the other people he lives with. So him, his class is like a vinyasa class. Like he mm -hmm. wants to work out. He likes doing yoga push-ups. Like, so that's one student. Um, luckily, you know, with, with the programs I work with, there are aides, there are people who are trained to, because I, I am trained to, to have contact, but I always ask, you know, I know some people don't want contact either whether it's because of COVID or just for personal reasons, um, but it, it's always helpful to have an aide or someone assisting. But again, for, for people like that, who I sense, you know, they're not gonna be able to keep up with a fast paced class. I keep it very open level. I keep mm -hmm. it very meditative. And we just do a lot of stretching and breathing and reflexology and a lot of, um, imagery. So like when we're doing butterfly pose, I have them close their eyes and, and say, you know, tell me where are you flying? What color butterfly are you? Because visualization and, and imagery is so amazing for relaxation. It, studies have proven that. Mm -hmm. um, I do that in our meditation as well. You know, picture yourself flying over a mountain. So I, I find that to be a big one. So yeah, to answer your question, I, I, I teach a very, um, a wide range, but, um, you know, people who could keep up with a class, you know, like I said, it's, it's a spectrum and there are some people in the spectrum where this practice would not be appropriate for. Excellent, excellent. As you had mentioned earlier on, um, a number of the people in our community suffer from sensory issues. Mm -hmm. And in your teaching, how do you best deal with those? So it's funny you say that. So again, since I, my, my practice is very done on like a case by case private mm -hmm. situation, I once wore a purple outfit to class and one of the students just could not handle it. He, he does not like the color purple. I was like, noted, I knew to pack extra clothes in my bags. I've learned, you know, through having a brother. So I, I you just have to be prepared. Like I luckily have the, the background and the knowledge of these types of situations. Um, in person, in person classes where I um, offer essential oils, I always ask the students, you know, smell them before I distribute them or put them in the diffuser. You know, you just, you want to make everybody feel comfortable. Um, but with the purple outfit story, I was so happy that I packed a spare outfit that day because I just knew that there was a chance of that happening. Yeah. You just have to, you have to roll with it. You know, you got to roll with it. It's, it. it's all from a place of kindness and it's just a different way of seeing the world. And it's okay. And I understand that now you're going to be working uh, with us here in the virtual studio and uh, having us participate in a little session of what you do. Thank you so much for that, Keith. Um, so for today's class, I'm just gonna give you a, a little 10 minute taste of what a class of yoga with Serena is like. Um, we're gonna open by, I'm gonna walk you through a breath work technique. Um, and then we're going to do some gentle reflexology. This can all be done from sitting in a chair just to get our bodies nice and relaxed and loose um, and have our bodies be ready for the closing meditation where we all close our eyes, get back into our breathing, do a little visualizing. And then at the end, we can um, send peace to whoever we'd like, because I always like to close my practice with sending and feeling gratitude. 
So on that note, let's all start in a comfortable seated position. Shoulders relaxed down and away from those ears. Good, well, looking good. And let's just do my favorite type of breathing. So let's just have our, our palms flat on our knees so we can ground ourselves, really connect with our bodies, connect with our breath. So when we inhale, we're going to inhale through our nose. And when we exhale, gently open your mouth, let it all go. And you can make a silent H when you exhale, like, or keep it quiet, do whatever feels good for you. And we're gonna take short inhales and long exhales. So follow me, please. Inhale, one, two. Exhale, one, two, three, four. 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 Good. So that was the first breathwork exercise. This next one I do in all of my classes, I find it to be so powerful. It's called Shanti breathing. And what we do is we start by placing our fingers just over our belly button. So not touching, just about an inch away. So you inhale through your nose, raise your hands to your neck, keep inhaling, open your hands wide, accepting the love and the gratitude and then exhale, ha, bring the hands to your neck, down to the belly. So I'm gonna do these with you. Let's begin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. This time on the exhale, let's take our arms and hug ourselves. So inhale, lift. Exhale, give yourself a big hug. You deserve it. No greater cure than self-love. Beautiful. So now we're gonna do some gentle stretching and reflexology to get the bodies relaxed now that we've gotten into our breathing. So we're gonna start by just taking our wrists, making fists, rolling out those wrists, going out, Good, this should feel nice and gentle on the wrists, but keep relaxing shoulders away from your ears and keep breathing. <sighs> Inhale, gently take the circles going inward, always evening everything out. Good, and then exhale, gently place your hands down on your legs. And now inhale, let's draw circles with our hips going in one direction. You can make these circles as big or as small as you'd like. Just don't forget to keep breathing. Good, and now when you get to the back, we switch directions of those circles. Nice job, everyone. Coming into stillness, let's make our hands into cactus tree. So fingers are spread wide, elbows are bent. We're gonna start to do some spinal twists. So deep inhale through your nose, 
As you twist all the way to the right, hold it there for a big breath. Inhale, gently turn to face the front of the room. Good. Deep inhale as we twist to the left. And then hold it here for one more breath. Inhale, come through center. Good. And now as we inhale, we lower the tree down. Lift it up. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Nice. Let it all go. Let's show our shoulders some love. So gently grabbing your shoulders, draw circles going forward with your elbows. And you could go one arm at a time or both together. Yogi's choice. Inhale, we now take the circles going back, allowing our chest to open up. Again, you could go one by one. We're both together. Nice job, everybody. Gently lower the hands down. Now, I'm gonna lift my leg so you can see me, but keep your leg low. We're gonna start by lifting the right leg. We're gonna point and flex, point, and flex. Good. Keep breathing as you point and flex. One more breath. Good. Gently lower the right foot down as we switch sides. So now we're going to point and flex the left foot. Breathing as we point and flex. One more breath. Nice job, gently lower the foot down. Now let's just start to draw circles with our chin, giving our neck some attention. And you decide the speed at which you move. Let your breath lead the way. Good, and when you get to the top, we switch directions of those circles. Nice, so coming into stillness, we're gonna do some words of affirmation before we get into the meditation. So I want you to start with your right hand. So taking your thumb to touch every single finger. So thumb to pointer, middle, ring, pinky. Good, and now we're gonna match words to the movement. Peace begins within me. Peace begins within me. Peace begins within me. Nice, we're gonna do the other hand now. So same idea, thumb touching every single finger. Good, getting into the movement. And we're gonna say this time, I'm feeling loved today. I'm feeling loved today today. I'm feeling loved today. Beautiful. It's always important to show yourself self-love because the way you treat yourself is the most important relationship in the world. So on that note, we're all going to get into this gentle meditation. I'm going to get the music playing. So everyone just start to gently close your eyes and let's have our palms facing upwards so we can receive energy from each other. Close your eyes. Getting back into your breathing. Inhaling through your nose, filling yourself up with kindness. And exhaling out your mouth, letting go of anything that no longer serves you. You can make the exhales longer than the inhales, like what we did at the beginning of class. Or you could just breathe gently. 
Listen to your body. Listen. Just start to think about your breathing, feeling the cool air entering your nose, and then feel the warm air leaving your mouth. And start to imagine what your breath would look like. What would the shape of it be? Does it have a color or is it clear? And now imagine if you could taste the air leaving your mouth. What would it taste like? And if you were to hold the air in your hands, what would it feel like? Would it be soft and gentle? Or would it feel a little heavier? Just imagine what it would feel like if you were to hold your breath with your hands. Just placing our awareness now into our bodies. Noticing if there's any area that feels heavy. And if there is, breathe into it and welcome it. Because what this means is your muscles have relaxed and that is the goal. Relax your feet, relax your ankles, relax your shins, relax your knees, Relax your thighs, relax your hips, relax your belly and your chest, relax your sides, and relax your whole back. Relax your shoulders, relax both arms, your elbows and your wrists. Relax your hands. Relax your neck. Relax your chin and your jaw. Relax the whole mouth, lips, teeth, and tongue. Relax the nose, relax the cheeks, relax both ears, relax your eyes, eyelashes, eyelids too, relax the eyebrows, relax the forehead, and even relax your scalp, letting every part of your body feel this deep relaxation. Breathe into it and welcome it. Thank you great. so much for joining me. This was short but sweet, but as you can see, we still 
got good breath work in, found inner peace, and connected with one another, which is my goal. Now, as a, a final note, um, if our viewers would like to contact you, what are the best ways of doing so? Sure. Um, they can contact me on my Instagram account, which is yoga with Serena. Um, it's at yoga underscore with underscore Serena. Um, and my email address is serena.azizo at gmail.com. Um, or you could also send me a friend request on Facebook um, at Serena Elizabeth. Again, a real pleasure in having you here, Serena. And I know we'll be hearing a lot more from you as we go. We'll now be hearing from Jennifer Brooks, our book correspondent. Good evening. Welcome to the latest edition of the Jennifer Brooks book review. Today, I would like to tell you about The Silent Boy by renowned children's book author, Lois Lowry, who has twice won a Newbery Medal for her novels for children. This book is set exactly 110 years ago in 1911, when people with autism were treated very differently from today. They didn't even call it autism so far back. They called it being touched in the head, along with some other terms that we now consider too derogatory to use. The Silent Boy ironically focuses on a girl. She's eight years old. Her name is Katie Thatcher, and she is the daughter of the town doctor in a small town somewhere in middle America. And she gets to know a 13 year old boy named Jacob Stoltz, no mention of whether or not he's Jewish. And this boy displays symptoms of what we now consider autism. He is nonverbal. He does not make eye contact. And he relates to animals better than people. Katie, here's a story that Jacob took a newborn lamb that had been rejected by its mother and somehow convinced. Thank you very much, Jennifer. We'll now be hearing from uh, Stacey Kennedy, our cultural correspondent. Hello, everybody. Stacey Kennedy here. I Today, my cultural report, what I decided to share is um, on Sunday, December 5th, will be a sensory-friendly event um, with a Santa experience for the community um, here in San Francisco at Stonestown Mall Galleria. Also, um, other, other malls will be at the Westfield Mall in Santa Clara and the New Park Mall in Newark, California. So this, this event is taking place in other types of malls and places and buildings um, at the same time, 9.30 a.m. Uh, December 5th. Tuesday, November 23rd, uh, starting at 7 on Zoom will be a Thanksgiving thankfulness uh, being organized by the JFCS and autismsociety.org. You can go to their website to find out more information on that. So um, again, it's Thanksgiving thankfulness on Zoom starting at 7 p.m. Tuesday, November 23rd. Um, and then the last thing, Wednesday, November 24th, um, there is a uh, event called Sparrows Disability Ministry on Zoom to provide opportunity for teens and adults with special needs to learn God's word in an accessible, um, I'm guessing what they mean by accessible, meaning in accessible ways or um, that starts at 10 a.m. It goes till 11 and adult English um, is basically the, the language um, and the organizer Valley Church in Cupertino. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Serena. This was wonderful. Uh, we know we'll be hearing a lot more from you as we go forward. So until then, uh, everyone, we are broadcasting uh, shortly before Thanksgiving, so we wish you all, in light of uh, sending out goodwill to you, a very happy Thanksgiving uh, 
holiday season for you and yours. Until then, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Jennifer Brooks. I'm Camilla Bixler. I'm Serena Aziza. And we're Ascend TV Life on the Autism Spectrum. Take care and have a great week. Thank you.